What is DNA repair? DNA repair is a collection of processes by which a cell identifies and corrects damage to the DNA molecules that encode its genome. Now in human cells, damage can occur from sort of one of two different types of sources. The first being endogenous or internal sources. And these can come from the normal metabolic activities that occur within the cell. Uh, the second type of source of damage is from exogenous or external sources, and these can be um, any one of a number of environmental factors. Now together, these two sources can result in as many as 1 million incidences of damage per cell per day. And so the DNA repair process is constantly active as it responds to damage in the structure of DNA. So how is damage to the DNA recognized in the first place? Well, damage to DNA alters the actual spatial configuration of the helix, um, and such alterations can be detected by the cell. So as you can see here, there's a little bulge in the DNA double helix, and that can be detected. So once the damage is localized, this triggers specific DNA repair molecules to bind at or near the site of damage and enable the repair to take place. Now, DNA repair mechanisms can be separated into single-strand repair mechanisms and double-strand repair mechanisms. And there are three main types of single-strand repair mechanisms, and those are nucleotide excision repair, base excision repair, and then mismatch repair. And the method of repair that gets employed really depends on the type of damage that gets incurred by the strand of DNA. Now, if a strand of DNA is exposed to UV light, a photochemical reaction induces the formation of these covalent linkages between adjacent pyrimidines, such as thiamine or cytosine. Those are the pyrimidine bases. And this yields pyrimidine dimers, which is actually the example of the damage shown here in the upper right corner of the screen. Now, these pyrimidine dimers are recognized by specific enzymes called endonucleases that cut out the damaged nucleotides, hence nucleotide excision repair, because the entire nucleotide is excised or cut out. Then DNA polymerase replaces the bases and DNA ligase reseals the gap. Now, not surprisingly, melanoma, which is a form of skin cancer, can occur if nucleotide excision repair fails to fix the damage caused by UV light. Now, if there is damage to a particular base, then base excision repair comes into play. Certain chemicals, like nitrates, for example, can lead to deamination of a base within a strand of DNA. And deamination is just simply the removal of an amino group. Now, when this occurs, base excision repair uses specific glycosylases to recognize and remove the damaged base. An endonuclease then cuts the phosphodiester backbone that is left behind at the damaged site, and then the gap is filled by DNA polymerase and then resealed by ligase. And finally, the last single strand repair mechanism is mismatch repair, which corrects the errors that occur in DNA replication and recombination that lead to mispaired but not necessarily damaged nucleotides. Now in bacteria, transient methylation distinguishes the newly synthesized daughter strand with the error from the correct parental strand which ensures that the repair occurs according to the correct template. In eukaryotes, the exact mechanism is not quite elucidated yet. So those are the main types of single-strand repair. Now let's talk about double-strand repair. Damage that occurs to both strands in the double helix can occur when there is exposure to ionizing radiation, such as gamma rays and x-rays. And, and just like there are three main mechanisms for single-strand repair, there are three main mechanisms of double strand repair, and they are non-homologous end joining, microhomology mediated end joining, and homologous recombination. Now in non-homologous end joining, a specialized DNA ligase forms a complex with a cofactor that directly joins the two ends and the break ends are directly ligated without the need for a homologous template. Now, when I say homologous, I'm referring to a similar linear sequence of gene loci. 
And the same goes for whenever I use the word homology. It's any two DNA sequences that have similar gene loci. Now, microhomology mediated end joining works by ligating the mismatched hanging strands of a DNA, removing the overhanging nucleotides, and then filling in the missing base pairs. So when a break occurs, a homology of, say, 5 to 25 complementary base pairs on both strands is identified and then used as a basis for which to align the strands with the mismatched ends. Once aligned, any overhanging bases or flaps and mismatched bases on the strands are removed and any missing nucleotides are inserted. Now, finally, homologous recombination requires the presence of an identical or nearly identical sequence to be used as a template for the repair of the break. And this pathway allows a damaged chromosome to be repaired using a sister chromatid or a homologous chromosome as a template. The enzymatic machinery that's responsible for this repair process is nearly identical to the machinery responsible for a chromosomal crossover that occurs during meiosis. And so that is it for double-stranded repair mechanisms. Now the actual rate of DNA repair is dependent on a lot of factors, including the cell type, the age of the cell, and the extracellular environment, just to name a few. And a cell that has accumulated a large amount of DNA damage, or one that can no longer effectively repair the damage incurred to its DNA, can enter one of three possible states. Now the first one is an irreversible state of dormancy known as senescence. And you can kind of think of the, the cell in this case as kind of going into a hibernating mode. And the second uh, possible state is known as apoptosis or programmed cell death. And then the third possible outcome is unregulated cell division, which can lead to the formation of a tumor that can become cancerous.